What is going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. We are getting out today and going to show you how to use the Guggen clickbait. Let's get to it. Today we are going to be trying to show y'all how to use the Guggen clickbait effectively to catch large bass or just any bass out there. I've had a ton of people reach out to me talking about the clickbait, you know, how do I use it, uh, where it works best, what kind of trailers. So today I'm going to be heading out, we're going to be fishing this golf course pond, uh, hopefully trying to show you guys exactly the techniques that I use to hook up on bass, but uh, maybe some of the trailers that I use, uh, just the styles, the reel, everything, kind of give you a full in-depth video of what I do to catch fish on the Google bait clickbait. So let's get to it. All right, guys, we are going to be using the black and blue exopod for our trailer. And the reason I like using exopods for trailers on chatterbaits, clickbaits, and stuff like that is because it has a nice slender body, so there's not a lot of issue. Uh, it doesn't create any sort of knocking or movement in the actual lure itself, so these lures can get their nice normal reaction that they're supposed to have. But on top of that, it creates a ton of kicking motion towards the base of the lure and gets those fish really curious and what's not only making that vibration but what's kicking right behind them all right guys we are throwing the black and blue clickbait this is a half ounce once again with the exopod trailer on there slightly trimmed maybe about a quarter of the inch way um, we got 15 pound fluoro so it helps to sink we got my shimano sitica 200 just got this thing and we're on the muscle rod i probably would recommend uh, something a little bit softer on the rod uh, but this is just the setup I chose to fish today I have yet to try this combo out so that's why I'm testing it uh, we are also rocking black and blue because as you can see it is overcast it's like 3 p.m. today and uh, we're about to get an ice storm coming in the next week or so so uh, overcast is out and we are gonna kind of try to adjust pull out the black and blue because it is a lot darker in the water created a lot of contrast and uh, also with that clicking motion, it'll help us hopefully attract some of these bass. So I've had a lot of people talk to me about issues with the bait actually coming straight out of the water. Um, I normally will run this on braid and I don't even have that issue. I think a lot of times it has to do with the trailer. Uh, unfortunately, if you choose more of a bulky trailer, it kind of makes it rise straight out of the water. Uh, also, it might just matter if you're burning it in or if you're running it a little bit slower. I personally work chatter baits like jigs. I'll kind of pop them every now and again, let them go up and down. Uh, occasionally I'll slow roll them on the bottom, usually with little tugs. Uh, I'll even do like a straight roll if I know that there's no grass or if I'm trying to stay just above the grass. I try not to go too fast. Uh, this is a 7-2 gear one ratio, so it's not too fast, not too slow. It's going to be that good balance of in between. Uh, but as you can see, I don't have any sort of issue with it rising out of the water until I'm right here at the end. Try to target some spots like right here underneath that tree. Bass like to hang out underneath structure, especially during the winter time. Get a nice little tug, make sure we're off any of that vegetation that might be hanging out underneath the tree as well. This is one of my favorite things to do with uh, chatterbaits. It's kind of like that yo-yo effect where you just pop it and uh, see what happens. Just pop and pull. And sometimes you'll just set the hook on them. But normally you'll feel that vibration kind of stop. You'll feel them tug it, go the opposite direction with it. Chatterbaits, fairly simple to use. Got hung up on some grass a little bit. There we go. So we got hung up on some grass, so I'm going to pop it up and it doesn't just kind of gets you off the grass and as you can see my rod tips bouncing again you know our chatterbait or clickbait excuse me it's working nice out there in the water clicking still so if you do get hung up in the grass one thing i always recommend you do instead of pulling on it trying to come sideways left and right come straight up and even bounce the base of your stick a little bit as you can see it makes it jiggle kind of uh shake that grass and come straight up out of it it's really really nice in the water right now I don't know if you guys can see, I'll show you. This is why I use little craws. Yoda worms work really well for these chatterbaits, but you can see that black and blue pops out very well, and those little claws just work really good behind that. Love that action. Did you get branched? You better slow roll that. Don't jump it. Slow, get close to the tip. Get, get, get it closer, get it closer. And then quick. I'll teach you how to get those lures off, baby. It's not all we do on my videos. <laughs> Shout out to our boy Fishing Dad Jimmy. Hey, Ryan just saved me uh, five dollars. <laughs> We're just gonna slow roll it, guys. Like I said, the weather's kind of weird. Water temperature's probably in the 40s, so we're gonna definitely have to slow roll it, try to target these fish. If we find them, it's gonna be 
at the bottom of this pond. We're up against some structure, maybe. But this chatterbait should definitely bring them out, especially the way we're working it. It's got that loud noise. It's got that crazy wobble from behind. Everything a fish wants. One thing I usually do when I'm also reeling in my chatterbaits, if I am gonna do slow roll, I always keep my rod tip down. You don't wanna go up with it. You don't wanna go too far sideways. Uh, if you're gonna go sideways, just a slight tilt. If you get all the way out here with it, you kind of ruin the fact that you can set the hook. Uh, it just makes things a little weird for you sometimes. You also don't always get that right chatter. You don't get that right roll. I recommend just like a slight, maybe uh, seven o'clock, eight o'clock type, where you're just slightly over on each side. Cut. Uh, we went to that. Oh! Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Smacked it out of nowhere. Low and slow. Low and slow for the win, baby. Low and slow for the win. We got him. We got him. It's that muscle rod. I was just about to say, man, I don't think there's going to be a fish in two, in two feet of water. I told him that, and then I pulled a fish out of that two foot of water. Look at that, boys. Wow. Clickbait don't work is what everybody tells me. And uh, low and slow, nice and steady, right trailer, half ounce, black and blue, on an overcast day. Look at that. It's got to be at least two and a half pound bass. Let's see. Dial this out. Zero, zero. Woo. Let's get a real quick weight on him. 2.77, almost three pounds, 2.75. All right, guys, once again, black and blue, half ounce clickbait does it for us almost a three pound bass out here in the golf course muscle rod with the new sitica reel loving it let's get this guy back in the water though, like i was saying look how easy this pop out's gonna be too love it that's why you gotta love these clickbaits guys they make our life so much easier all right let's get this guy cleaned up back in this cold water we'll see you later buddy all right, guys, that's how you use the clickbait. Hopefully we catch another one to show you guys exactly what we did. Just slow rolling it like I was talking about, pitching it like I was talking about, and uh, that's what we're going to keep doing. Let's get back at it. Uh, another cool little trick, guys, when fishing chatterbaits, fishing clickbaits, vibrating jigs, is make sure you're fishing parallel with the water uh, sometimes when the bite's kind of falling off. If you get the opportunity to fish parallel with the water, you definitely want to do that. Try to find these drop-offs because these fish will come up off the wall and off the uh, the deep just to come up and attack these vibrations. Like I said, when you make that noise, they're gonna come up, they're gonna try to find out what it is and uh, usually just strike out of reaction. So we'll fish a lot of times parallel with walls, parallel with the bank, parallel with any sort of structure that's out there. That wind is picking up, guys. I'm sure you guys can hear it on the camera. You on him? Okay. Giant, bro. My drag tip is you got him. That's a three. That's a three. Oh. There you go, baby. I told you. That's I how you do it. You. That's how you do it. Let's go. Jimmy Woo. on the chatter. What color are you using over there, huh? Black and blue. Black and blue, guys. No. All right, guys. We are coming up towards the end of the day. This weather's been so shifty. I mean, if you look over to the left, you got sun. You look over to the right, you got rain clouds. You look over behind me, you got like storm and rain clouds and sun. It's, it's like crazy. It's everything. So the bite's definitely been off. So we're gonna work our way towards one more pond, see if we can find them over here. If not, call it. We can kind of recap at the house and try to tell you a little bit more information about these clickbaits. All right, guys, so I'm gonna save you the 30 minutes of casting and pretty much catching nothing for the rest of the day. Just go ahead and talk about this clickbait one more time, kind of do a recap. Um, so out there on the water, the main way that I was kind of using it is just pitching it, slow rolling it, uh, kind of that yo-yo effect. And those are gonna be the main techniques that I recommend that you guys use, uh, or at least practice when you're fishing. Uh, I usually just work my way all the way around the pond. If I'm out in the open, that's when I do that slow roll, try to keep it on the bottom. If I'm kind of on a point uh, working, you know, that structure parallel with the structure, uh, sometimes that's when I do like the pitching technique or like a yo-yo kind of popping it. Uh, anytime you see vegetation lines, structure in the water, uh, that's when you're going to actually kind of try to pitch just outside that structure and kind of pop it more like a jig and work it really nice and slow. Uh, once again, we did have that black and blue pattern, half ounce Guggen clickbait with the black and blue exopod. Uh, this is one of my favorite trailers, hands down. I use it for almost all my baits, uh, any type of uh, chatterbait, clickbait, uh, little spinnerbait, stuff like that. It's one of my favorite things to use exopods. It's got that really slender body, makes it really easy to roll through the water. And it's got these two nice little fins at the back, make it really easy to kick. Uh, I believe it's 
technically supposed to be like a double-tailed grub, uh, but it works very similar to like a craw or like a bandita bug, stuff like that. So as far as when and where to use clickbaits, chatterbaits, stuff like that, uh, I use them almost all the time. I do them when I'm pond hopping, uh, when I'm fishing waters that I've never fished before. I don't know what type of fish are in there. Uh, clickbaits are just a really good generic bait to throw. So similar to like your rattle traps and crankbaits, stuff like that, that has a lot of rattling, a lot of noise. Uh, it tracks the fish very similar, but on top of that, you don't have to have that constant reeling motion to bring that lure underneath the water and retrieve it back to yourself. Uh, so that's why I enjoy them. You can kind of pitch them, uh, toss them around. They don't have the trouble hook, so you don't get caught up on stuff like that. All right, everybody. So that is going to be it for today. If you like the video, please leave me a thumbs up. Like I always say, it helps out the channel a lot. Uh, make sure you subscribe as well so you can get in on future videos, but we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.